Welcome back to the Hockey Show, and today we are talking about the Pacific Division, the division of the four in the NHL, one of the four that I think among most things on this hellish earth that we live on where one neighbor to the next neighbor, one friend to the next friend, or just none of us can seem to agree on anything, whether you should eat meat or should not eat meat, if we're all going to die or no one's going to die, if whatever the hell, we can never agree on anything. But I think one thing that we can agree is that the Pacific Division is definitely the weakest of all of them in the NHL because it th th this division never like has like a strong standing right where the Central has the Avalanche, the Jets, the Stars right now this year Nashville like there's so many heavy hitters right even in the past it was like Chicago and the Predators in the past and then the Blues right there they always have like a lot of heavy guns and then the Atlantic Division don't even get me started with all the heavy talent back there right but the Pacific they either have the team that just is going to win the Stanley Cup or a team that has or just no one that's going to win it, right? They they always have, like, one heavy hitter, and that's it, right? And for a little while, it was Vegas, and now I know, like, Edmonton got to the finals, but let's all agree. They should, they were lucky to be there. Let's be fucking honest with ourselves. That Edmonton did not deserve to be in that spot, but regardless of all that, and, like, kind of like Vancouver back in whatever, but blah, 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 right? Overall, this division, I think, is going to look way different than it looked this year because I think a few of these teams had a lucky season and I think are going to regress. Some are maybe going to go up or down. Let's talk all about it and just go up and down the list. So let's start off with the Vancouver Canucks, the team that finishes off first place, the crazy team that bounced out out of nowhere, apparently, and no one saw them coming, right? I mean, last season, like 22-23, like, I think most people would agree, like, oh, yeah, they're a team that could be competing for a wild card spot, and they did, they kind of got there. This year, you could have said, yeah, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse, they're going to kind of be middling. No, all the way at the top is what they landed at. The team with the Orca logo finishes right at the top of the, uh, even the NHL, really. I think they're, like, what, seventh in the NHL or something like that? Like, fourth or something? I don't know. They were crazy good. But this year, 50, 23, and 9, 109 points. There's just no way they can replicate that or somewhere. They, they're not going to be able to put together a season that puts them back in that first tier. Like, there's just no way. Because Luke Hughes, Luke, Quinn Hughes, Brock Besser, Thatcher Demko having career years this season, right? Like, especially Hughes, 92 points, led all defensemen in the NHL. Not even Kale McCarr does that year to year, right? So Hughes is definitely going to take a setback. Brock Besser, 40 goal season, 70 points, well, 73 points this year. He's going to be taking a step back. Now, I'm not saying a huge step, right? I'm not saying they're going to, they're over here and they're just going to go all the way over here and they're just going to, they're going to be like, I can't get there, right? It's not going to be like that. But they're going to go from here and maybe to here. Maybe even a little bit back here, right? Besser, he goes from, what, 40 goals to maybe 30, right? That's a 10-goal difference, which does hurt a team, especially when it comes to the top end of things. And just with him and also JT Miller's amazing season, right? And then you counting Quinn Hughes, where from a lot of points coming from the back end of things to help them out. Everything is just going to take a step back this year, right? It just has to happen. That's what every team does. There, no team, like, perfectly replicates that, even if they keep together all those pieces, especially when it's a breakout season for all these things, right? Hughes was great. I love Quinn Hughes, but this was his huge all-star season, right? Got to take a step back now. Thatcher Demko, same thing. So overall, right, we know this NHL, the regular season is owned by teams like the Maple Leafs and stuff where they get a lot of wins by having some super powered offense like the Oilers, like the Maple Leafs, like they did this season. You have to have that superstar offense to really, or the just really loaded offense to keep you really competitive. After that, it's teams like New York, not New York, in the Islanders where they would struggle in the regular season to get into the playoffs, and then once they got in, they would just pound their way all the way to the Eastern Conference Final. They're designed differently, right? So to me, Vancouver, that offense is going to take a setback, a step back this year, and then the defense is definitely going to isn't amazing. And Demko is going to be great again, but he's just not going to be that goalie that once again, right? It's just not going to happen two years in a row. It hardly ever happens. So to me, they're going to take a step back this year. I don't think huge. I don't think they end up here and then down to here. But I definitely think there's going to be some teams that can pass them up this year. Namely, the team that finished behind them with 104 points, the Edmonton Oilers. Now, I know I just grinded their gears. I did not let go. I did not let loose. I let loose. What the hell am I saying? On the Edmonton Oilers just a couple videos ago. But that is to still say that it's the same kind of 
story, right? It's a tale as old as time, like the Maple Leafs, where you're perfectly designed for the regular season, but is not going to win the Stanley Cup. The Oilers, they leaned into the super offense. They now have like three lines that can go out there, dominate, and score a bunch of goals. They have defense and goaltending that can do just hold up the line, win a lot of games. And after having their abysmal start to this year, I know they were the best team in the NHL in the whole entire history of the world since November or whatever the hell everyone wanted. It keeps saying over and over again. But after that insane run, that insane run, like, they're just, they're going to just be a good team overall the entire season. I don't think they're going to go off to their horrible start like they did. I think they're going to be just fine, and they're going to cruise, and I think up with their, they still have issues, but their issues for later, and that's into the playoffs, right? The regular season for a lot of games, when they play against teams like the Ducks or the Sharks or the Blackhawks or what what have you, the Montreal Canadiens are going to dominate. They're going to win games that are close against teams like Calgary and Seattle, and to me, they're going to win these games. They're going to put together a great season and I think they're going to end up at least in the top three I would say top two number one is always like who's going to be super hot and I feel like they're going to finish in second place this year that's my feeling about Oilers second place feels right for them the LA Kings first team I'm going to go say they're going to go way down I think the LA Kings had their breakout season for a few guys like uh Trevor Moore and uh they're going to have a and byfield where Byfield is going to, I think, keep growing, but guys like Moore and guys like uh, Kopitar, guys like Dowdy, their goaltending is not any, I mean, Dem Kemper, it kind of really depends what happens with him, but overall, this team is another team where it's like, you're not amazing offensively, and you didn't get any better, in fact, the only thing that can really happen is you get worse unless there's like some sort of crazy upcoming but to me LA is the team where I'm like they could be the one to get bounced out of this top four easily and to me LA just only thing could be is to get worse they had 99 points which is only one above Vegas and speaking of Vegas they are going to be back on top of this division I think I think Vegas is going to be back in the number one seed the amazing additions that this team can keep adding and somehow you work the math and put together some creative fina uh, financing, like, I can't believe what they did. And with adding Alexander Holtz, who looked good on the third line on in New Jersey, then to Tomas Hurdle, so now they have, like, three centermen of Carlson, uh... Carlson, Hurdle, and what the hell is uh, Jack Eichel? They have three amazing centermen. Hannafin on the back end of things. So the Theodore, Hannafin, Petrangelo, White Cloud. Like they've got some really good defense back there. And then the goaltending is just fine enough. Samsonov on a new city like this. And Aiden Hill's already a solid goaltender. So many things going for them. And hopefully this year isn't as injured as it was for them last year. To me, Vegas feels like they're an easy slide into number one. And I think right now it goes Vegas. Oilers, and I think it comes down to the three three and four are going to be LA, I mean, uh, not LA, Vancouver and Seattle, but I'll get to Seattle in a minute. So, Calgary up next, right? 81 points, 38, 39, and 5. This team, Calgary sucks, and they've only got worse. They get rid of Markstrom, and uh, what, what the hell else did they lose? I know they added some pieces, but honestly, like, overall, Markstrom was playing amazing on a horrible team, and now they're bringing in a rookie goaltender like Dustin Wolf. and as much as I think Dustin Wolf is a killer goaltender, he is not that, like, Marc-Andre Fleury. He's not going to come in there and, like, and own that spot. It always happens, and they're going to give him a bit of a ride sometimes. He's going to lose those games. This team has only gotten worse from last year, and from 81 points down to, like, what, four more losses to, like, where Seattle was seems way more logical than them getting any better. And even if even if a guy like Jonathan Huberto can turn things around and somehow go back to his Florida days, I just don't think he even has the, the teammates to get him to that 100 points. Even if he turns it around and he gets to like 70, 80 points, I don't see it changing anything. This team's only gotten worse overall. They're only going to go down the list, and that's just really it, right? So to me, down, and Seattle goes up. I think this is the year where Seattle comes back and strikes like a snake just like that and they're going to come back into that spot their tentacles is going to come out of the water and they're going to like the kraken and for davy jones is going to come in and they're going to destroy the boats of all the teams in front of them seattle to me the young guys with like tolvin in on the team they got a couple of other young guys the additions with stevenson and montour even though 
Chandler Stevenson's contract isn't the best long term. I think right now they're a team that perfectly needed like a solid, solid, like a perfectly solid, like proven second line centerman on a team like this will be perfect. I think to, they've gotten together once again, like the solid, a mate, like the solid second line team with Brandon Montour on the back end and really helped things out and Burakovsky and McCann. Like I feel like they're all going to be back, ready to go again with the goaltending with Joey Decord back there and Philip Grubauer. Or just it feels like the stars are aligning for them to have a solid year and be back in the mix and to me with teams like LA and C, uh, Calgary just feeling like they're going to be worse 34 to 44 wins was the gap between Seattle and Edmund I mean uh, LA right and to me I think Seattle will be able to make up those wins and with if LA going down I think from them if they go down to like 38 wins right where they are Right, I mean that wouldn't be insane, right? If they if LA loses six wins off of what they had this year, and then they are able to get into that like forty win territory, doesn't seem unrealistic to me. And to me, Seattle's going to slide in, and if it's like the top four to me is going to be Vegas, Edmonton, Vancouver, Seattle. Maybe Seattle slides. No, no, no. I think it's Vancouver. I think it's going to be Vegas, Edmonton, Vancouver, Seattle, and Seattle's going to get a wild card spot. That is my prediction for them. Because then the teams at the bottom of them doesn't matter. Anaheim, San Jose, once both the same kind of story. Both have gotten a little bit better with their rookies, but not going to be amazing. I think the Sharks will finish above the uh, the Anaheim Ducks because of Tyler Toffoli and Celebrini. Like it just feels like they have the more talent to win a few of those games and just kind of ink out a couple more. Well, maybe I don't know. The defense and all goaltending is insanely horrible for the Sharks. So maybe they do finish at bottom of the list again. Maybe they do. You know what? Yeah, I think they do. So honestly, this is the way I see the Pacific Division ending this year. I think it's going to be Vancouver should slide down here. I think it goes Vegas, Edmonton, Vancouver, and then Seattle. But all four of them get into the playoffs. I think Calgary goes down and LA ends up there. And I think that is going to be the Pacific Division this season. Vegas has just gotten so good. They're hopefully going to be healthy this year. They got guys like Hurdle who are looking for a rebound. Hannafin going from a pretty bad team in uh, Calgary to a pretty good team in Vegas. Vegas just looks like they feel like they're ready to bounce back into their winning ways from their Stanley Cup year to having a pretty lackluster year for them this year to just bounce back, right? It feels like they're ready for it. Edmonton feels like they're going to be once again just really good but not incredible after their like insanely amazing run they got to come back to earth a little bit and to me that's second place Vancouver finishing in third I just don't think they're going to be as good as the amazing offense that is with Edmonton to overcome that and to me they've got to set back their year too the Seattle bouncing back into the mix makes sense to me LA falling out of the mix missing the wild card spot I think they'll be close I think like the wild card spot let's say is like 90 like one points and then they fall out into like 87 or something like that so they'll be there but they're, they're not going to get in Calgary they were bad this year they didn't get any better so they get to 80 points let's say 77 doesn't matter to me they're not going to be with these two it's going to be like this I think this is what it looks like where LA is going to be semi-close Calgary's like far away from LA and then these two are just at the bottom that's what it looks like to me and that is my prediction so that is all I've got to say about the Pacific Division it's going to look very different than this year but I think this is what we're going to see so that is all I got to say I think this is pretty fair but tell me what you think down below because obviously you're going to disagree with me so tell me how stupid I am I'm ready to hear it but anyways thank you for watching this if you've made it this far please I'm begging you please subscribe please it'll make me smile like that. But anyways, thank you for doing everything, and I hope you have an insanely good day. Too sweet, and ta-ta for now.